that, all those that uh, were able to be here this morning, as well as the folks that are online with us. Uh, we do have a few announcements. I think we've got three that are going to be on the slides, and then I've got one other, and I'll ask for any others uh, before, the, before we quit that. Uh, so the birthday dinner is this Tuesday at 6 o'clock, $8 a person. And if you can't be here, you don't, uh, uh, don't feel comfortable coming in and eating with the folks, uh, they do have carry-offs available. So if you'll let uh, Bonnie know or call the office, uh, call in the office this week won't work. You have to let Bonnie know. All right, if you have, if you want to have a, a be part of that meal, uh, the Edgewood Community Thanksgiving service is Sunday, November twenty second at the high school, and we do have a new website. And if you take a look, if you can use the same old website uh, address that you've used in the past, uh, and uh, go ahead and bring that up and take a look at this uh, this new website. I think you're going to be very impressed with it. There's been a lot of work that's gone into it. Uh, thanks to Jason and Jen and Ariel and a lot of a lot of other folks, I think that it's uh, that it's pretty uh, pretty wonderful. We've been looking forward to this for some time. Uh, the Sunday school class is going to take a break from Revelation on December sixth and thirteenth, and we're going to watch on the sixth. We'll watch the first half of the movie, and on the thirteenth, the second half of the movie. It's uh, a movie based on a Max Lucado book, and it's called The Christmas Candle. So if you're available and uh, would like to see a really wonderful movie, please plan on joining us at uh, 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Are there any other announcements? Looks like we're good. All right, before we go on with our call to worship, uh, Wednesday was Veterans Day, and this, uh, this uh, uh, church has a reputation and, uh, and a history of recognizing veterans. And we'd like to go ahead and do that this morning. I've got a short prayer I'll read to you. But I would ask that any veterans in the house, please, uh, please stand for this and be recognized. Steve and I. All right. Out there online, I know we have several others. Uh, Van is one that uh, one I'd like to especially recognize. Uh, Jack is another one. So uh, our two uh, World War II vets. So please keep them in, in mind. Today is a day we honor the noble and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives and the sacrifices that they made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some came back from war with battle scars, others in flag draped coffins. Even though the flesh may have left, their spirit will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them, because without them, freedom would have died. Amen. All right, let's uh, go, to the, go to our call to worship, and this is in unison. We come together today to worship God, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, and with community. Let us worship God today. For God forgives us, encourages us, and loves us. Let us worship God today. Our opening song is America the Beautiful. Please stand.
time on the pass of peace and Christ to one another, so please turn and wave to your neighbor. No handshaking, no touching, anything like that. Peace be with you. Our song of worship today is I Love You, Lord, number 214. Please remain standing for that.
you have to bear with me as I kind of go through a new process, even for me. But right now, we'd like to pray for our pastor, and for our community, and the things and the events going on in our life. Let's pray. Father God, in the mercies of the name of Jesus, we come into your presence, for you are our God. And Lord, we love you. And we thank you for your love and grace upon us. We thank you that 24-7 your forgiveness abounds. And Jesus said, I came to give you life and to give you life abundantly. And Lord, now in Jesus' name, we pray for that abundance on our pastor, his family, students at Miami University, those in ministry all over the world. We pray for our community, our school system at Edgewood, Pray for the saints who have gathered here that when they leave this place this day, they know that their soul has been filled with the love of God. And Almighty God, I pray that the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, for you are my rock, my redeemer. Jesus said, with everything that's going on in our lives, 
He said, come to me. So I've got something I have to do. I've got to go to him. Because Jesus is invited. Just like you've been invited to church. He says, come to me. Come to me, all who are weary. And have it. How many of you are weary? I'm weary for all of this stuff. And I um, feel burdened by some of the stuff that's going on in our lives. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. In the original language, rest meant paradise. I will give you paradise. And I will give you peace. And the only way you feel the peace is down here in your inner being, in your soul, because your soul holds the emotions of your being. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you. Jesus is a carpenter. I wonder how many times he constructed or built a yoke. You're all familiar with the yoke and the yoke on the oxen and how they put it together in the two oxes. Did I ever tell you about ox or oxen? You know, it takes four years of training before the animal becomes known as an ox. They have to go through four years by choice, most of them will select a male because they're bigger and stronger, but not necessarily. It could be a cow. I've seen Holsteins, you know, the big black and whites, working as oxen. And you see the Charlet and some of the other ones. But they have to go through four years of training. And they start them as very young, and they put the two of them together, and they train them up together, and then they begin to put yoke on them and to begin to train them to do the work that oxen have been called to do and that's to move the load on down the line. Now saints you can tie in anywhere here that you want to tie in because the load has been put on us to move the train on down the line. Now the oxen normally one of them will be a little more of a leader type than the other one. And I think of being yoked with Jesus, or I think of being yoked with Mike, or I think of being yoked with any of the people here within the congregation. Now, the interesting thing about being yoked, if I move too fast, the yoke's going to come up and push your ears forward. If you move too fast, you're going to move, I don't know, my ears are going to come up and move, or my shoulders are going to get sore from holding back. But it took four years of training. Now, what happens in the field, if they put an untrained ox in, or one that's not part of the parish, the thing kind of breaks down until the training kicks in. It's kind of like us in church. Sometimes we're walking together, and if somebody new comes into the, the program where we are, it takes a while to get everybody assembled and put together. But he said, take my yoke, his yoke. I'm to be yoked with him. And I'm to be yoked with others of the same kind. Take my yoke upon you. And then he said, learn from me. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us, even through this pandemic, even through this turmoil that we're living in, even through the mess on the streets, even through the burning down of businesses and the gasoline prices and Wall Street. He said, come to me. Learn from me. He said, I am gentle and humble in spirit. Now in this same chapter, just earlier in chapter 11, he reproached the cities for the miracles that were done in them because they didn't repent. And he laid into them. This is not to say that Jesus never got angry. He emptied the temple and they were selling things in the sanctuary, so to speak. And he ran them out but his, gen his primary emphasis is, I am gentle and humble in heart. If you learn from me, thus saith the Lord, you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. So you put on the yoke. My yoke is useful. My yoke is generous. My yoke is kind. And only in the New Testament is it used this way? My yoke is 
useful, my yoke is gentle and gracious. And my load is light. I said, how can, how can he do that? How can he say that? My load is his load. It's the dying upon a cross for you and me. And in John chapter 10, he tells us, I can lay down my life. I can take it back up. God has given me the authority to do that. So therefore, because of what he has called each of us to become, he said, my load is light. Now your load today, or your burden today, may be heavy. And we're going to deal with that in just a moment. But I want you to know that he said, my load is light. Even though I'm going to go to the cross, there's joy for him in dying upon the cross because he sets us free. He sets us share with you two other passages. I'm going to go back into the psalm. Psalm 130. For the last three years I've had the pleasure of having some more free time because I'm not pastoring full time. So I've spent the last three years studying the psalms. Love the psalms. They're spoken more of in the New Testament than any other book in the Bible. But I think what we're going through today, you and me, and as we've heard earlier and seen in the book, out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. Lord, with the burdens I've got, with the grief I'm going through, with the angst with which I'm living, out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Psalm 116 tells us, I love the Lord. Because he hears my voice. I'm telling you, saints, I love the Lord because I know he hears my voice. And he hears my supplications. He hears my prayers of eternity. Because, how do I know? Because he has inclined his ear to me. When I call out to the Lord, he inclines his ear. To, in the Hebrew context, it means when you cry out to the Lord, God processes to what you are saying and prepares to respond to your prayer and your supplication. Therefore, I shall call upon him as long as I live. I will listen to him. And have you ever been in Green Bank, West Virginia? Anybody? Last time I talked a little bit about Wheeling, West Virginia, because that's my home area from where I live. Green Bank, West Virginia, is known as the quietest town in America. Can you envision living without a mobile phone? I can't envision living without my mobile phone. I can't imagine living without Wi-Fi or GPS or Bluetooth. You ever try to live without your microwave oven? How many of us even stand in front of our microwave oven today and say, hurry up? <laughs> we do that on occasion. But the quietest town in America is Green Bank, West Virginia. There isn't any Wi-Fi. There's no mobile phone. There's no GPS. There's no Bluetooth. There are no microwave ovens. Now why would that be? Green Bank, West Virginia is the home of the Green Bank Observatory, the world's largest steerable radio telescope. This telescope is so big, it covers more land than a football field. It's a steerable radio telescope. Green Bank Observatory is the world's largest radio telescope. It has a surface area larger than a football field, stands in the center of the National Radio Quiet Zone. You know there's a 13,000 square mile quiet zone. It enables the scientists to hear, and the scientists refer to it as the 
listen to the music of the spheres. I listen to the pulsers and I listen to what's going on way out in outer space. God communicated to a wayward and distracted people with everything going on in our lives. We are a wayward and distracted people. But God in Isaiah 55 said, Give ear and come to me and listen you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. He said, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with you. He said, but come to me and listen. And listen. How? How do we listen? How do we put ourselves in a position not to be distracted? I'll tell you a little more about Green Bay. It's near the Virginia border. It's in the Monongahela National Forest. I don't even know what they own in that. Nearby towns are Clover Lake, Stony Bottom, Cheek Bridge, and Snowshoe. I've been to Snowshoe. I know where that is. Some of you may have been there, but you've been close to Green Bank, the quietest town in America. How do we get quiet enough with everything that's going on in our lives? How do we get quiet enough? It's difficult. There's too much distractions. Phone rings. Television's on, you're hurrying up to do something, other people are trying to reach you, you're trying to deal with situations going on in your life. I remember once I was able to get quiet, really quiet. Ended up in a place in Rome Mountain, Tennessee. Rome Mountain, Tennessee had a ministry up on top of the mountain by Fairhaven Ministries. And in Fairhaven Ministries, little cabin. And you could go up and stay in the cabin. It was clean. It had a little library in the cabin. They even had cookies on the table. Vision. No radio. No newspapers. And you're stuck up in there in the mountain. I went up there to spend time because I was working on my doctorate program. They gave me a week just to do some writing and thinking. Trying to hear from God. How do you listen to God? How do a couple of ways we do it is by scripture, and you've gathered here in church, and scripture, and by prayer. I think there are other ways that you hear from God. I think occasionally someone will say something to you, and your heart kind of goes, whoop, pops up. And God may have used a person to say something to you, and you get quiet enough then to listen. Or situations or scenarios may line up that you're saying, oh, the Lord is leading me on a path. I know on occasion when I'm reading the scripture, if you're reading the scripture, and all of a sudden your eye keeps going back and you read that verse again, or two or three verses, and then your eye goes back and you read it two or three times, God's trying to talk to you and trying to tell you something. He's trying to speak to you, and you're going to have to get quiet enough listen to him. The churches today have to get quiet enough to listen to him. He may be taking us on a long way around. God took me on a long way around. I'll share something with you out of Exodus 13. When God told Moses Bring them out of bondage. He's going to take you to the promised land. You know, God's told us he's going to take us to the promised land. But all of a sudden, after 400 years of bondage, they're leaving Egypt. And Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. Now it came about when Pharaoh had let the people go. All of the plagues that could be set against the Pharaoh had been set. Pharaoh finally said, I give up. Leave. Now it came about when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines. God didn't take them on a shortcut to the promised land, even though it was near. For God said, lest this people change their minds when they see war and they return to Egypt. He said, I can't take you on a shortcut to where I want you to go. God may be doing that with the church today. He may be taking us the long way around. 
Hence God led the people around the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. You know they need part of the Red Sea and they crossed. And the sons of Israel went up in martial array from the land of Egypt. And 40 years later, he had them prepared for what he had called to them to do. I understand something of which I'm speaking. I believe without question in my heart or my mind. God had ordained and purposed me for the ministry and for teaching the gospel. But he took me a long way around. When I was growing up as a young guy, I had it within my spirit and heart to be a success. And I was going to move whatever I had to move to be successful. By the time I was 24 years old, I was the general manager of a radio station. I had 15 people working for me. What at age 24 do you know about leadership? I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know how to really lead the people. By the age of 25, I had gone into business. What do I know about business? I didn't know anything about business. But I said, I know I can make this work. So I was pushing my way through to get everything done in proper and so I did become a bit of a success. And where I was and where I was going became somewhat known and had been written about in a variety of places. But God was taking me the long way around. I went the long way around because I wasn't ready for what he had for me until later in life. And then the call started to come to the ministry. And it took him take me the long way around. I'm wondering with the pandemic and with the turmoil and everything that's going on in the country today, if he's not taking us the long way around to prepare us for the coming of Jesus. How many of you know that Jesus is coming the second time? Amen. And maybe we are in that preparation process. And so what do we continue to do? Continue to pray and continue to hold and I hope and look to God. We continue to pray. Well, I prayed and prayed and prayed. But, you know, why isn't it like uh, Amazon? Why can't I just lift it up and boom, two days later I get it? Why can't that happen? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And you might be in the process of taking up. Long way. You may be in that process today where he's taking you the long way around something you're praying about, a supplication you're needing, and that which you're lifting up to him. I've read about a man by the name of Harry who was concerned for his son-in-law who had turned away from God. And every day Harry prayed for his son-in-law, John. Harry died. Ten months later, John comes back to the Lord. And then John's mother-in-law said to John, you know, Harry prayed for you every day. Every day he prayed for you. And then John said, I waited too long. But the mother-in-law said, you know, the Lord is still, I want you to hear this, the Lord is still answering the prayers Harry prayed during his earthly life. Whatever you're praying for today regarding a family member, scenario, or situation, you got to remember, God hears your voice. He's processing what you are praying, and he's responding to you. But he doesn't work on the same timetable we work on. I'm working on a timetable because I'm looking at the clock. It's Sunday. So I'm concerned about the chronological time because we started at 10.30, but we're getting ready, and it's Sunday, and tomorrow's another day. So everything's chronological and linear to us, but it is not to God. It is not to God. So the prayers that you're praying today may well be answered at an appointed time, and he may have brought whomever you are praying for around the wrong way so that your prayer will be
be answered in the manner with which you have prayed of Jesus. God hears our prayers. The question is, are we listening? Are you listening to hear from God? Has someone spoken a word to you that your heart kind of flips up into your throat? Or are you reading the Bible where you keep going back and reading that passage over and over again? God is saying something to you. You've got to be listening. Church, you have to be listening. You've got to be listening. And part of the listening is to know that we are forgiven. We are forgiven. I read about a cemetery. We've all gone to a cemetery at one time or another. A cemetery outside of New York City had the man's name, no date of birth, no date of death, no epitaph, like here lies a great guy who loved his family. It's his name in one word, and the word was forgiven. Isn't that a big thing to have on your headstone? We all forgive him. For he loves us gives us, and he wants the very best for us. Now, in light of having the very best for us, as he brings us around, and he brings us around so that we can serve each other, there's a passage that I was looking for in 1 Peter, whatever I did with it. Ah. Church, no sense. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. As each one has received a special gift, everyone in this room, everyone watching has received a special gift. We are to employ it, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace. I love the word manifold. The word manifold means many colors. For every grief that you're going through, for every tough passage you're going through, regardless of the color, God has a matching color of grace for you. Now there's two ways to serve the Lord. Basic. You either do it in speaking or you do it in serving. There's not one more significant or greater than the other. But those who are to speak are called to speak and to teach and to encourage those who serve or to serve, whether you're working in the sound booth or singing in the choir or being the lay minister or taking up the offering, however you serve to better and move the church forward, even though the church may be moving around in a long passage. And he may be taking us through some dark spots to get us to the place that he wants us. You either speak or you serve. Whatever you're called to do, you have received a special gift. And it's either the basic category of speaking or serving. As each one has received a special gift, employ it, use it to serve one another as good stewards of the many colored graces. Whoever speaks, when the wind's blowing down, speaks. The is moving so You can just see the leaves fly. You can hear the door being opened by the sound of the wind. He's moving us. He's moving us. Whoever speaks, let him speak, as it were the utterance of God. Whoever serves, let him do so by the strength which he supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified. Whether you speak or you serve, you do it for the glory of God and the gifting of reaching out and touching others wherever they need to be reached. Whoever needs to be reached here today, in your inner being, God is reaching out to you today through others who have gathered together to worship, praise God, and to serve each other in whatever manner that he has called us. Whoever speaks, let him speak as the word the utterance of God. Whoever serves, let him do so by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. So 
For saints, I believe that God could be leading the church in the world, the world, a long way around, to where he wants us to be, just as he did when they were coming out of bondage. And the church seems to get stronger and more diligent in what it's proposing to do. I remember churches of old, and you study about them and read about them. In Scotland, I remember in the Presbyterian church, some of the elders carried little coins, and they would deal with the members of the church and ask them questions. And if they responded to the questions correctly, they'd give them this particular coin, then they could take communion. You couldn't take communion in the church in the auspices of Jesus Christ until you were able to answer the questions that the elder was asking. They were serious about I believe in our world, sometimes we kind of ebb and flow, and maybe the churches have ebbed and, and instead of flowing, and so God's taken us around to being a little more diligent, a little more purposeful in what he has called us, not only to worship him, bring glory to him, but to reach out and share with others what God has done in your life. When he took me the long way around, I tell you, and I got the peace that passes all understanding. And I walked away from everything that I had to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you in a position to say, thank you, Lord? Are you in a position to continue to pray for those that you love or are concerned about? And even though you would pass away, God can still be answering your earthly prayers in the time frame that he chooses. Amen? Amen. Anybody says amen a little stronger, I'm done. Oh, come on. One more time. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you and enrich you all the days of your life. Let me pray for you. Father God, we come now in the mercies of the Jesus Christ as we get ready to close in a song. The song sums up the message from the day. Take my life and let it be consecrated to you. Lord, I pray a special blessing and anointing upon the pastor and his family, the congregation, and I thank you for the numbers who came out on such a day to celebrate the goodness of Jesus. Lord, hear their prayers, for they're praying to you in the name of Jesus. Answer their prayers and let them be able to respond as, I know that God hears me and I receive his forgiveness and grace fresh every day. And Lord, let them receive you and your fullness and let them be all that you have designed for them to be, to touch lives now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let it be.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. His smile be upon you, his peace on you, his countenance with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Have a glorious day, saints. God bless you. Veterans Day van. Hope you had a good one.